It's 8.30 in the morning and we're very excited because today we're getting a special behind the scenes look at Suzanne Shaw and Matt Evers, the 2008 winners of ITV's Dancing on Ice, as they're practicing behind me for the next season. I've got to say it's my most favourite outdoor ice rink I've ever been on. It's brilliant, we're having so much fun um, and it's been great to be able to use the space which is very similar to the studio rink of Dancing on Ice, so it really helps us. I grew up skating on an outdoor ice rink, um, which is where I started, so to be back on an outdoor rink has uh, kind of come full circle for me, so it's, it's been amazing. Now, I don't know about you, but I am absolutely awful at ice skating. Now, everyone here in at Bristol has been getting a little bit better over the weeks that we've had the ice rink, but we're certainly nowhere near as good as Susanna and Matt, and we can't pull off the same kinds of tricks and spins that they're able to do. So to help us to understand just how they do those spins, we're going to investigate the physics of dancing on ice. The question we're going to ask today is how does an ice skater manage to spin so fast? Start off with everything open, your arms out, your leg out, and then as soon as you want to speed up, you start bringing everything in. And then when you bring everything in, you go really fast. To understand how these figure skaters are able to pull off these kinds of spins, we need to take a look at the forces these skaters are under. This is Jazz, our model figure skater, demonstrating the moment of inertia which is the property that tells us how easy it is for something to rotate, as defined by the equation moment of inertia equals mass multiplied by the radius squared. But what does that mean? Well, as Jazz spins, the length of her outstretched arms is the radius, or R. Their mass is M. With her arms wide, the bigger radius results in a bigger moment of inertia, so it's harder to rotate. As she draws her arms in, the radius gets smaller, reducing the moment of inertia so it becomes easier to rotate. But why does she spin faster? To help us understand this, I'm here with Neris of the Live Science team. So Neris, why does jazz speed up? Well, it's all to do with the conservation of angular momentum. And what does that mean? Well, Jazz has angular momentum because she's spinning, and that's the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular velocity, how fast she's spinning. So where does the conservation part come in? Well, if there are no external forces acting on her, then angular momentum is conserved, it stays the same. But when she pulls her arms in, she's reducing her moment of inertia, so something else has to change to balance that out. So the angular velocity increases? Well, that's the theory. Let's try it out. I'm going to get you to hit this ball around a pole, and we'll see what happens. What? <laughs> <laughs> so as the ball rotates around the pole, the string gets shorter, reducing the radius, giving us a smaller moment of inertia. And because the angular momentum can't change, the ball speeds up to balance it out. That's right, just like what happens with our ice skater. So with a bit of skill and a lot of practice, these figure skaters are able to use the conservation of angular momentum and the physics of dancing on ice to achieve those fast spins. And if you want more science every week, don't forget to subscribe. All that's left for me to do is to put it into practice. 